thank you. I'm um, grateful to be here today. Um, I came here from New York, and um, I wanted to, to use the opportunity here to encourage all of you to, uh, to, to understand that nothing is impossible. I, uh, I got involved in the communications industry simply by, by accident that, uh, in fact, uh, I am a misfit. I don't know how many of you realize that if you're an entrepreneur, that you have your own ideas, that sometimes you get things way before anyone else does, that you may not belong in a large organization because you have to create your own companies. You need to actually find a way for your voice to be heard. As a kid growing up, what I discovered uh, was that my passion to communicate enabled me to help change the world, but I didn't know what I was doing as I was doing it, but I allowed my curiosity for communications to take me through things. For example, when I was nine years old, and I don't know if any of you have ever been lonely, ever felt really by yourself, but that was me. And it was my uncle who took me to his office on Long Island, who demonstrated, which today would be an old technology known as amateur radio or ham radio, but my uncle brings me to his office, he shows me, his, shows me around, and he had this object on his desk that he flipped a switch and these tubes, that the radio lit up, literally, there were radio tubes inside, and he spoke a very cryptic language because he was dialing around the, and he was finding, I heard noise, he heard voices. And he simply put out this call, he said, CQ, CQ. This is K2QQM calling CQ. Says it for about a minute, let's go with a microphone. And for the next hour, I was mesmerized. And my uncle was talking to people all over the world, saying his name is Fred. He's in Farmingdale, New York, and giving a signal report of how strong the people were. And as I'm doing that, I'm listening to my uncle speak, and I realize that my uncle has the cure for loneliness. And all I had to do was take that radio out of his office, put it in my bedroom, and before I wake up in the morning, as I wake up in the morning before school and after school, I could have friends. But the catch, was that I had to actually teach myself Morse code, college level physics, and the rules and regulations of, to be an amateur radio operator. So it, I didn't actually get my license when I was nine. It took till I was 12 and a half to get my license to communicate, but I've, ever since I've had that license, I haven't shut up. And that opportunity to connect with the world is how I've lived my life. Uh, I grew up on the radio. I grew up connecting people, and, and it was obvious for me that to be able to connect a telephone to a radio was a good thing. People would reach out to me from across the states. I grew up in a time when long distance actually cost something, so that if you're calling from, from Finland to New York, it wasn't pennies, it was dollars. And so as a courtesy, on, as amateur radio operators do, somebody would call in and I would patch the radio together. 20 years after being a ham operator, I found myself online on the internet. I downloaded some software in uh, February of 1995 called Internet Phone. In fact, the iPhone wasn't born in 2007 from Apple. It came out of uh, Israel in 1995. The internet phone was the first product that successfully allowed us to connect and communicate around the world. But the weird part was you, didn't, you didn't, did not need a radio. You needed a computer, you needed connectivity. And 20% of the people who are online were using their ham radio call sign as their identifier. So it was a very awkward way to communicate. But six months into this project, I started a mailing list and someone asked, is it possible to interconnect a telephone and a computer? Being a ham operator with my phone patch, it, it worked. A month later, in uh, October 1995, I launched a project on the internet called Free World Dial-Up. It was free, it connected the world, and it ran on dial-up. And to this very day, it was the first thing that, one of the first communication projects that everyone viral on the internet. By November 1995, we had hundreds of people and ultimately thousands of people offering free phone service around the world. That brought six months later, 300 phone companies to the Washington trying to stop everything. Happy to say that we created, I created a trade organization that allowed it to actually flourish, that we were able to say no to people trying to disrupt us. And that's when I learned that you can dream and you can do things. That if you don't know you can't do something, anything becomes possible for you to do it and that the future truly is unwritten, that it's not that you're qualified to be an entrepreneur, you're not qualified to be a disruptor, you are. And your ability to change the world is only bound by your imagination. Everything can happen in front of you, it just depends upon how you want it to happen. Um, I'm very fortunate that over the years, that my passion to communicate enabled me to do all sorts of other exciting things. These days I focus on the intersection of messaging, artificial intelligence, chatbots, and I, and I worry about where the future is going, but I also am positive about it. I have a positive slant 
that in the future, things could be better, not worse. That imagine artificial intelligence that brings love into your life. I would like to show you a one minute video, if I, it's queued up in the back, called GPS. If you could go to the video, please. No, 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 I, no. Let the nice man clean your window. Oh, oh. Give him the 50. Uh, yeah. Yep, okay. In 100 meters, turn left. No, I have to be in the airport in half an hour. In 50 meters, turn left. No, I can't, I have to. Turn left. Okay. Call your mother. Hello? Mum? Hello, dear. Mum, the GPS is telling me what to do. What do you mean? How's Dad? Stop the car. Take off your shoes and socks. Tomorrow, take the day off work. This is ridiculous. I can't. I can't take the day take off. Take the day off work. I can't. I'm just too busy. You have reached your destination. See, he found his destination. So that's an example. That was built. That was the filmed in 2010. That was an idea. That was before conversational interfaces became pop popular. But the idea that we could add artificial intelligence to our lives in a meaningful way and actually help connect things. I mean, look. The more the, the more virtual we become, I think we have a much stronger need ever to be face to face with people. There's something about the power of a hug and this interact interaction that cannot be replaced with any other technology other than people. The ability for us to connect on a meaningful level is, is going to be restricted only by how we're able to create communication systems that connect to us. And for all the fancy messaging services that are out there today, what I find absolutely crazy is how hard it is to communicate with people. Because these days, am I going to be on Telegram? Am I a messenger? Am I on WhatsApp? Is it going to be SMS? Is it going to be email? Is it going to be Facebook? You just don't know. We have too many methods to communicate, two different ways to actually do things. But you know, unfortunately for us, at least as far as I can tell, Email is a cockroach to the internet. It does not die. People have been trying to get rid of it for 40 years. It seems to persist. It seems to continue in our lives. So for all the other communication systems out there, don't give up on, email will not give up on itself. Um, when, I, when I look at our ability to make things happen though, I do, think, I do take things personally. I, I do believe that it's our responsibility to stand up and do what we feel is right. And it's your responsibility to stand up for your dreams. When I was discovering voice over IP, I was working in Wall Street, and I had shared with friends the idea is to have web-based email, but someone said that was a stupid idea, so I didn't pursue it. I had an idea that I, should do bro that I should do a mortgage brokering on the internet. Another friend said that was a stupid idea, I shouldn't do that. And what I realized is that I had to find new friends, that, that I had to find people that didn't put me down, even if I wasn't being understood, that I had to encourage myself to actually find a chance to be, in, to be an innovative, and so I am. But it takes a lot of strength and a lot of courage, but sometimes it's ignorance that is bliss. Because if you're not bound by what you can't do, anything and everything is possible. And that when you're sitting here thinking about the dreams that you have or how to pursue it, don't let anyone get in the way of your dreams, including yourself. You need to understand that, you need, that there's a strength you have inside of you that gives you an idea of what to do every day. You may choose to go in one path, but when you wake up and you find your center and you realize how, how short life really is and how many years do you want to spend doing someone else's dream, why not spend that time pursuing your own? I, I've recently had some life experiences that really allow me to appreciate the moment and appreciate every breath and every, every chance to do things that, that I've, I'm passionate about. So I, I do travel around the world. I do photograph the Milky Way because there are times when I'm looking up at space and I realize how small we are compared to the rest of the galactic universes out there, that I could find the time and just relax and to look up at the stars and try to understand maybe there's something else that's happening around us. Sometimes I get inspired. I know about you though, the, the best ideas for startups I ever get was in the shower. I never quite figured out in America why is it that if I get these ideas for, for startups in the shower, I go to work, there are no showers. Like why do I have to go to work to work. Why can't I actually go there to dream? But one, maybe one day we'll figure that out. Maybe there are other cultures where you can shower at work and it's cool. Um, but for me, it's the inspiration comes from working with people that get it, 
that will allow you to be a misfit, allow yourself not to fit into anything else but to be yourself. Um, personally, I like benevolent dictatorships. Those are companies that I run based on my rules. Because when you're an entrepreneur, you get to set the culture that works for you. And so it's one of the biggest benefits too is to be able to be disruptive, to allow yourself to find that path that allows you to figure out what you want to be. If any of this is, is interesting to you, feel free to disrupt me. You could find me on Twitter at, at Jeff Pulver. I'm also on Instagram. And if any of you need any, any advice, don't call me. But my number is plus one, five one six, three one two, three two two seven. You could find me on Telegram. You could find me on SMS. Um, I'm happy to help. I'm trying to encourage as many people around the world today to stand up and find their dreams and to understand the future is in your power. It's, it's only that we look to you to bring the next generation of innovation into this world. Thank you very much.